So you're probably all wondering how exactly it got to the point where I was using enchanted wooden shovels, and the reason is actually because they're better. And you might also be wondering how this video ends up in a place where I place glass in my nether and arrange hundreds and hundreds of items into chests, specifically in the most dangerous part of Minecraft world, but this is just part of the course of this Let's Play, as I'm sure you know. By the end of this video, you'll understand everything you need to know. Hello, I'm FTX Toy Cat, and welcome back to an episode of the Minecraft Bedrock Update Adventures Let's Play. And and this is going to be a slightly unconventional episode and we're going to be doing slightly unconventional things and we're going to be proving lots of bizarre points like the one from this title but also some other ones because do you know what I need to work on my nether I need to add some glass to the nether in fact for reasons you'll work out today um, and obviously getting some right nice regular glass is one of the ideas we can get some of this just fine sure but what I want to do today is make some purple glass for the nether because you know what is most fitting for the nether to have some purple going on there but I only have some glass I only have some blue uh, dye and I don't have any red dye so how do I get some because I want to have a nice purple dye to match the purple of the portal well there's actually a really unique way you can get yourself some red dye if you play Minecraft Bedrock Edition it actually started here but I believe it's come over to the Java via a parity update since then but basically um, one of the bizarre ways you can make red dye that most people still don't know about because red dye is it it's not something you think about too often it's only when you want to dye things red and immediately you jump to the red flowers as the, uh, the only way to do it but if you want to get some red dye, all you need is some of these babies right here. That's right, you might think that they're just some darn beetroot chilling in the ground. They're actually one of Minecraft's most useless um, plants in my opinion. I really don't like the beetroot, but the key benefit to having them is it is a very cheap, affordable way of getting some red dye. So if you want to get some red dyes, then combine, uh, say, your blue and your red dye together to make some purple dye. We can do that, and that is how we are making some purple stained glass. This amount of purple stained glass, apparently. And uh, yeah, see how easy that was? This is just the start of the weird, inefficient things we're gonna be doing today. Because another issue I've been having that's gonna involve a crafting table is I've got a lot of snow on my mountains. If you look, I've been lighting up the Minecraft world um, for a very long time. It's one of these weird, bizarre projects. But look over here and you'll see that like, oh yeah, I've been lighting up the world so that snow can't fall anymore. But sadly, snow does still fall. And unless there's a torch, directly nearby, it becomes a real problem. So how do we shovel up all of this snow that's become a problem in certain areas? And how do we fix it from spawning there again? Well, obviously we could place some lighting around here. That's one of the options. And also one of the things we need to do is we need to hoover it up. We need to shovel it up. And uh, what shovel should we use to do that? Well, logically the best shovel would be a neverite one, but let's not damage our neverite shovel because when you're using a shovel just to shovel stuff up, a netherite shovel is going to be exactly the same speed as even a wooden shovel. That's right. Let me just show you this to prove this right now because it sounds kind of unbelievable. Here is my, uh, here is a nice wooden shovel that I'm going to make on the fly. So two wood makes four sticks or another word, one wood makes two sticks. And then if you add one more, uh, you know, piece of wood on top of those uh, two sticks, another word, one wood, you can make yourself a wooden shovel. In other words, it just takes two wooden, uh, you know, two planks to make one of these wooden shovels. Um, and admittedly, like you might think like, well, stone is just as cheap and stone will last up as long. But allow me to convince you right now in this video, why a wooden shovel is better than a stone shovel. Also, let's kill this creeper. You know, here's another way to get some snowballs from the ground, huh? But anyway, because when you use a shovel to get snow, you're using the left uh, trigger functionality or the right click functionality, uh, this actually is instant. It takes zero seconds, which means even if you use a neverite shovel or you use a wooden shovel, it takes precisely the same time. Let's prove two blocks in a row right here. One, two, and then sh let's show you one, two. It's exactly the same speed for either. And this also applies to making paths, meaning if you want to make paths, it's the exact same speed, whether you use wood or whether you use neverite shovels. And this this means the only real benefit to using iron or using neverite or using anything else like that the big and singular benefit you can really point out is that you can obviously use the same shovel for much longer at, a, at the same time. Like, yeah, this shovel will only last until, uh, you know, it's about 60 uses or so, whereas this Neverite shovel with Unbreaking Free on it will last um, something like 8,000 uh, uses. I'll show you the number on screen that a Neverite shovel lasts right now, and then multiply that number by four for Unbreaking Free, you get a lot of uses from it, right? But this Wooden shovel, on the other hand, only gets 64. Seems real useless, and as long as you don't break them, they're not useless, I swear. If we just brush the durability to the side, because that is the one big weakness of these wood shovels, however, um, something you can do with wood is you can get better enchantments than you otherwise would be able to on stone. Because if you look at all the tools, wood is actually the same level of enchantability as neverite, slightly more enchantable than diamond, and much more enchantable 
uh, than stone. Meaning that if we were to go to level 30, we can get on breaking free on there, or we can just put efficiency on there just for fun. You know, let's, let's enchant a bunch of wooden shovels just now, just so you can see that like, yeah, even using level one enchantments, actually, Here's Unbreaking 2, get some more going on there. Wow, that sure is great, right? Uh, you can enchant wooden shovels and you can get reasonably good enchantments with very little XP, uh, you know, having to be spent on it and with, uh, you know, without having to combine them together, which obviously you wouldn't do of wood, but the fact that you could is real good. And that's why I tell you that you should. You should, in fact, use wooden shovels if you've got, say, a lot of snow you need to harvest, or if you don't have snow that is in a place that's annoying that you want to get rid of by placing some path blocks instead, um, you can sometimes still benefit from it if you're just, like, trying to pick it up anyway, from using wood instead of using other tools. You will have to switch out your shovels a lot more, which maybe will annoy you, like, oh no, we've gone halfway through this one, let's switch out to another one. But there is a certain joy, I do have to admit, in just using wooden tools. There's something very strange about using wooden tools once you're like, you know, many thousands of hours into a Minecraft world and something even weirder about not just using them, but enchanting them as well. Like, again, not the most efficient use of experience, but a lot of people uh, don't value XP so highly, especially if you've done, uh, you know, trading uh, farming quite as a big thing. So uh, for those people, I say, here's a thing you can do. <laughs> you can totally uh, run around with an enchanted wooden shovel. And that's how we ended up right here on this mountain. The cool thing about collecting up snow is that you get these snowballs, which are super inventory inefficient, but all you have to do is combine them into snow blocks, and then you get a bunch more space to continue doing your snow and your, your pathing. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing these in the perfect pattern around the torches that the snow has formed. So we're gonna end up with this kind of weird uh, dirt pathway blocks that like link up uh, kind of perpendicular to the torches or like in an opposite of the torches inverted from the torches maybe we could say and I'm really hoping that the effect that that creates will be kind of great because gravel mountains even though I hate gravel do have an interesting effect on Minecraft so maybe this will have a similar thing or maybe this is the worst thing I ever do in my life I don't know yet but let's keep on switching shovels and doing it it seems like such a waste to have just efficiency right like it literally does nothing for me but you know, who does anything for me these days? Honestly, tell me if you think I'm wrong, but doesn't this wooden shovel look kind of like a Neverite shovel when it's enchanted? Like, they're both dark, they're both kind of dull. Uh, yeah, uh, I'd say Neverite looks super, way more like a stone tool or a wooden tool than it does like diamond. Which is maybe a good thing, because that means the prettiest tool in Minecraft is still the diamond ones. Every now and then I like to use them just to remind me of the good old times when we did those silly things. So recently I was thinking about something that seems really trivial, but it's, you know, an important part of like one, one of the driving factors for most of us in our lives, right? And I was like, why do we find houses so important? Like you don't need a house to be alive. It's assumed that you are like, oh yeah, to be homeless is to be missing one of the bare essentials in life because you need shelter to avoid weather in certain places. But in reality, it's not like being on the, damn it, I wasted another shell. But in reality, it's not like, being on the street is actually going to kill you in most places. So why is it that like we see like a house is the most essential thing? Like if you don't have a house, your your whole life is flipped, turn upside down um, as a result, you know? And um, I, I, you know, like it's like, oh yeah, it's just a thing that we all like. It's a thing that we all want. But why why does that become a necessity? Like I, I really like McDonald's. Why is that not a necessity? Uh, you know, it's food but like you don't need that particular type of food. We all need shelter, but we don't need it in the form of a house. Uh, maybe maybe that's just like me diving into too much. But what I kind of concluded is like everyone needs or feels like they need uh, some form of house in their life. Uh, just because of the fact that, um, you know, even though you don't technically need one on the most fundamental level, uh, we, we feel like we need, we need one because it's like the one private space in your world. It's the one part of this world that like you have exclusively uh, you know, domain over. You can control how it is and control how it be. Uh, something cool about Minecraft is that it literally gives you an entire world to change and shape as you want. Do you want to enchant wooden shovels in your Minecraft world? You totally can do that. And no one can tell you what you can and cannot do, right? Like, uh, you know, you can try all you like to tell me that I shouldn't enchant wooden shovels. It's a waste of experience or whatever else. But I'm going to be convincing you how it's not only just as good right now, but there's one solid way that these wooden shovels are going to be better than even, uh, you know, stone or neverite or whatever else you want to argue, uh, even without the enchanting factor, even without um, everything else in there. We'll be getting to that in a second. But the fact is that you can control what you do in your Minecraft world, kind of like how people like to control what's going on in their houses, sometimes just in the who comes in sense, but also more in the sense of like what you do there. It's kind of down to yourself. You're 
Um, there's a simple, it's a really old um, British law that's like, um, I think it's called like the castle doctrine. Your your home is your castle. It's your place where your rules um, go or whatever. But it's also the place where you decide who comes in and out. And I think that's the most important thing about it. Like the world, when you're outside, demands something from you in exchange for you being somewhere. If you want to go to McDonald's, you know, McDonald's, it's always the example now. If you'd like to go to McDonald's, they do usually, in my experience, uh, request some money for you uh, from you in exchange for your uh, presence there. They're like, hey, you, you can't just eat my Big Mac, sir. That's not how our business works. Um, if, if, even if you want to just be on the street, you know, doing your own thing, um, you know, playing the Nintendo Switch on the streets, uh, someone eventually is going to come along and wanting someone from you, and that's their right. You're in, you're in public. You're in all of our collective space, you know, where all of our rules intertwine, except where um, yeah, all of our rules are... Damn it, I broke another one. I'm trying not to, because my next point really relies on it. Actually, have we broken... We've got all the shovels now, which means we can move on. But yeah, the fact is that like public is just a space where all of our rules kind of collectively com combine and where we need, you know, laws or whatnot to make things work. But uh, in, in private, in your own uh, house, it's where your stuff goes. And I think that like is a varying degree of importance for some people. Like some people have no fixed homes, not because they don't want one, because they have no need for one. Some people have very large homes. There's a single ranch in Texas, I learned about this. It's called King Ranch. Um, and you know what? It's gonna be on screen now because of my lovely assistant. Uh, the King's Ranch has a size that is bigger than, um, uh, it's bigger than I think the state of Delaware. Or like, it's, it's something really dumb like that. Like there is a single property owned by a single person that is that size. And yeah, some people like real big, some people go real small. But speaking of big and small, uh, once you've used up your wooden tools, they've got some of the best efficiencies for disenchanting. So uh, here's me just right now. Uh, you know, disenchanting a shovel that tossed me, I think, one experience point. As you can see, I don't get the full experience point back uh, when I'm done, but I get almost a full experience point back in some cases. So it's very efficient. You can enchant them and get most of that back, depending on your level. If you're really low level, you literally will get a profit, I would imagine. Actually, I wonder if you do it. Like, literally level zero, you might be able to get your full level and maybe a bit more. So there's a thing you could do. But here's the real, real wonderful thing. Once you've got a bunch of broken wood shovels, you can actually, if you want, use them as fuel in your furnace. That's right. If you want to, say, melt down a bunch of iron tools and into iron nuggets, something I've said you should do before, you can be even more efficient about smelting down your stuff because when you smelt down that stuff, you can use your other tools to do so. You can smelt your tools using your tools. Even if we have like, is there an iron? Yeah, here we go. Here is my iron shovel that I picked up uh, from a villager. I could use this all the way to the max I wanted to. I won't for now. But that shovel will then, oh sorry, my wooden shovel will be used as the, the lease on life to smelt up my iron shovel. This is a ridiculous image, but it is a valid way, like it's Minecraft teaching you the value of recycling isn't that beautiful? Or maybe it's not to you. I, I don't know if you care about recycling. But um, yeah, the fact is you can use these wooden shovels as fuel when you're done. Something you can't do with stone tools. I actually have a really issue, real big issue of this. Look how many, uh, like I've got this many wooden swords, sure. But look how many stone swords I have. It's a problem. I kill a lot of wither skeletons. Um, and I can't do anything with these tools just yet. I'd love it if Minecraft did something like that. But all of these wooden swords, because they're made of wood, if I wanted to get rid of them, I don't really, but I just want to prove that I can, you can smelt them down and get genuine value from them. Can you smelt a bow, actually? I feel like you can't. But let's see, you know, only one way to know for sure, right? Only one way to be absolutely certain whether or not a bow will smelt. I feel like it won't. Although it's made of wood, partially. That might be a real cool way to get extra use from a thing. So this is an iron axe being smelted by a bow. Well, there you go. Now we've learned an extra thing we can do. But um, yeah, if you if you use wooden tools, you can smelt them off the fact. And no, my point in this video is not actually meant to be use wooden shovels all the time. My point of this video, uh, you know, the, I think the beetroot thing being better than flowers is better most of the time. I think wooden shovels are objectively, you know, better than stone shovels when you make that argument. But the point is, is that there isn't really such thing as objectively when it comes to Minecraft. Uh, a lot of people have this genuine thought in their head because their u favorite YouTuber tells them implicitly or explicitly um, that there is a way to play Minecraft and it's my way, it's the most efficient way. And obviously, farms are a thing that are 
uh, very much exploiting the big thing in Minecraft. I do, you know, use certain farms in this Minecraft world. I have a skeleton farm out there somewhere. I have a string farm out there somewhere. I have a giant sugarcane farm to the sky height, although it's not automated. So I think some people don't call that a farm anymore if it's not automated. But um, a lot of people feel like, you know, automation, etc., etc., is the only point of Minecraft. And it's fine if you want to treat the game that way. You can treat the game however you want in the grand scheme of things. I hate how these snowballs work in like the current update. Something just feels wrong about them, right? That's not how snowballs should be. But um, yeah, a lot of people tell you there's only one way you can and should play the game, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I think the point, you know, it's Minecraft, the game is your castle. You get to decide on those things for yourself. And um, although, uh, I think in the case of this particular thing, obviously most of the time you might not want to use wooden shovels, but the fact that you can choose to and have some genuine reasons and benefits for doing so is a benefit to everyone, not just those who do decide to do precisely that. Also, look at this. So, the reason I'm placing uh, glass right here, it seems kind of dangerous and destructive. Oh, there's a piglet there. How nice. Um, but the biggest reason I'm doing this is because I'm really, really terrified about ghasts blowing up all of my chests with all of my uh, blackstone in. Because I'm moving... This is my bastion that I destroyed, if you didn't watch that live stream series. I don't blame you. It was like 14 hours or something. I might condense it into a video soon. But, um, the, um, I, I've got so many, uh, so much stuff that I have here. And I placed it in this little nether area. Having a nether chest room is objectively a bad idea. You can never truly defend it on bedrock again. Uh, might vary depending on your platform. Uh, you can never truly 100% defend it. There's always going to be some weird uh, behavior that will get in your way. But in the case of this one, my main goal is just to be like, okay, we're just gonna, just gonna defend it a little bit. Just gonna do the main defense. Also, I just realized having a red and blue floor and then purple walls, there's, there's like a, there's a certain beauty of that. Also, do you think I should have furnaces going all the way along the top here? I think they make a good, like, having this little gap here feels kind of ugly. Having furnaces there, on the other hand, that'd be real nice. So let's use all that stone that we can now say we saved, having not wasted it on stone shovels, because we used wood instead. And let's let's go make some uh, furnaces, shall we? Yeah, I sure would have no cobblestone left if I, uh, you know, spent any on shovels. Sure I'm glad that I saved that for the purpose of this. But yeah, uh, Minecraft's a game. You can make decisions all that you like, regardless of how much sense they actually make uh, in the end. Because, or rather, in the never, am I right? Um, but yeah, um, the kind of thing, thing I was realizing about house, the kind of value it has, something you don't realize until maybe it's gone, or until you, you question where it's at. It's like, oh yeah, the real value in a house is that it keeps you away from the outside world. Um, like, it keeps the outside world away from you, rather, I guess I should say, in a pretty cool way. And that's why, uh, you know, the fact that it's the one place where you don't get bothered by other people, I would say, the one place where they're not allowed to effectively bother you. Uh, but with the exception being, like, spam mail, which I I don't know why it's allowed to exist, by the way. Why are you just allowed to do that? Is, is it even allowed in your region? If spam mail's not allowed where you live, let me move there, because that... It's like, why are you just allowed to come up to my front door, put something through my letterbox, that isn't intended for me, it's intended for, for everyone. But I digress, anyway. You know, spam email's actually just as bad, like, I, I, I'm so glad that email has, like, um, you know, like, there's, there are laws against sending emails to people without giving them the ability to, like, opt out. Fun fact, maybe you know that, maybe you don't. But, um, yeah, you can get in real trouble. I, I had, a, I had like, a, back when I was, like, 12, uh, one of the, like, business people I work with had a serious issue that, like, his website didn't have an opt out for their, um, email thing, and they got into huge trouble with, like, the Canadian government, I want to say. I forget who it was, but it was some dumb act they got in trouble with. And, I, I, you know, at the time I was like, that's dumb. Why why, why is the Canadian government uh, stopping them from sending emails or whatever, or, like, trying to sue them for, for backing up of a law? And then I realized, like, you know, actually, at the, you know, having, having emails that come regardless of you wanting them to, it's real bad. It's, you know, not a single person's ever been like, you know what, while I'm ordering this pizza, I wish I would sure would love to sign up to an email list, right? <laughs> maybe that's just me, actually. Maybe I maybe it's just me not wanting to know about all the all the fabulous new pizza offers going on. But like when you use a service once and they want you on that email list, it's just it's just a marketing tool. When when someone comes to your front door, it's just a marketing tool. People realizing that annoying, like annoying people who aren't going to be your customers, is actually an okay business decision to make because if they weren't your customers before and now they still aren't. Nothing lost there, really. Okay, look at this. We've now got enough furnaces in the nether to fill up all those spots. And we got ourselves a little private room. We need more chests, I would say, because this wall's going to be filled with chests. And then 
Maybe we'll have chests under there. Or maybe we'll just have chests surrounding the room. Again, lots of decisions to make, in my opinion. Uh, but for now, we've just got to do something really uh, cumbersome and move all of these chests uh, or shulker boxes full of uh, blackstone bits. Again, I moved all the main blackstone. But we've got to move the, uh, the blackstone uh, stuff, etc. over to these chests over here. It's a very, very, very tiresome process. So I won't bore you by looking at it. Except actually, you're not. You can look at it in a thousand times speed. Here you go. Okay, I'm just kidding. You, you don't have to watch this at any speed. It's just, it literally is just looking through blocks, sorting them this way. This is actually something that, like, you can automate. And might actually be better to do so when you've got this many blocks. But a part of me wants to do it, like, by hand. Like, to sift through the wreckage of the entire bastion that I destroyed in my pickaxe. Um, but... It is worth mentioning. You can, and if you want to, maybe you should automate something like this. But you know, I'm I'm in too deep. I'm committed to my to my line now. Um, but yeah, which is a problem actually. A lot of people have where they're way too committed. Like one of the uh, worries I have about uh, well, one of the like worrying characteristics we have in the modern world is we get really really stuck into our way sets because admitting you're wrong is like showing weakness. It's like showing defeat. Like aha. Uh, we caught you, we caught you not being right, and therefore you won't be right about other things. And I think that's such a bad, toxic idea, like, not only to say that about other people, like, oh, someone who admits they're wrong, I can be wrong about things, but also to, like, think that about yourself. Like, the only way you become a better person is by changing, you know? Like, if you were the same person you were at 18 or at 12 or at 11, you would be a... You know, some people do never change at all, and you can see them. They've, like, got the mindset of children. There's a very big YouTuber who perhaps focuses on drama, who effectively is just the playground... I, I'm not even the playground bully, just the playground, like, I don't know, maybe drama kid, you could say. Maybe that word um, triggers some people. Like, just the guy who's, like, uh, you know, obsessed with, like, you know, the, the rankings people have for each other, like, wanting to be the cool uh, guy on the board. You can see stuff like that in uh, how some YouTubers genuinely uh, behave. Or, like, and you can see that, because yeah, I guess, you know, it, if you're eternally a 12-year-old, and, but you've got the body of a 35-year-old or whatever. A lot of 12-year-olds can be like, oh, wow, this guy is what I want to be when I grow up. Because even your vision of what you want to be in the future is something that will change as you age. Which is one of the most, uh, like, it's one of the biggest things to, like, struggle with, in my opinion. Like, who is more right about who you should be? Past you or current you? Or even even more than that, like, should it be future you that decides that? Who, who, who gets to decide who is you? And obviously... It's a dumb question because you is a constantly evolving, changing thing that doesn't even really have a fixed definition uh, to speak of. But it's still, to me, it's one of those like eternal struggles. Like, I want to, if you want to live the best life possible, you have to negotiate this thing. You know, you have to effectively learn to negotiate with many alternate versions of yourself. And I don't know how most effectively to do that. But I'll stop boring you with chess sorting gameplay. So I just spent literally 15 minutes sorting stuff into chests, and now I'm about, like, 75% done. I've only got this many shocker boxes for the stuff worth to move, so that's positive progress, and this much is already organized. It's going to be really cool to see at the end, and that'll be uh, a video about destroying the entire thing that will be hopefully coming soon. Um, again, it's, like, been a big 15-hour streaming project. I like to condensify them down to videos, because not everyone wants to watch 15 hours, which is a whole interesting thing about YouTube. We could have a crisis about in itself. But for now, let's go work on something because, you know what? I need to, uh, you know, place some, I need to do some shoveling in the overworld. But why is it that I don't have mending on my Neverite shovel? I have mending on this sword. I have mending on this pickaxe. But I don't have mending on this pickaxe. I have it on this axe. Why not my shovel? And the simple answer is I just haven't gone to get mending in a while. So let's do that now. And let's use these shock boxes, which I have oh so many off to actually bring some sugarcane with me. Ooh, and let's help our odds by doing the once video tradition of apparently killing a pillager aid. Every single time we record one of these videos, doesn't matter how long it is, it seems like we run across a pillager aid. I don't even always take them anymore, but given that I'm about to go to a village, it seems fitting that we do. So let's grab some empty shulker boxes. We'll probably just take like two or three, and we're gonna fill them up with sugarcane. And you might be saying, Toy Cat, you don't have an automatic sugarcane farm. And I was actually considering making like a really small scale automatic one, but there's just something sad about having a small scale automatic sugarcane farm when you have something so grand next to it. So the plan was, you know, maybe we could do that, have it at the village. Sure, we should, you know, it's, it's something I might get around to one day, but there's just something nice that I miss about the old console days. This is like, I guess, nostalgia. Doing something that is less 
um, valuable than it should be. Doing something uh, that is less efficient than I would like it to be. Just because it reminds me of some simpler days. Because back in the console edition days, there used to be a leaderboard for like most sugarcane broken. And obviously like people would always hack to get to the top or whatever. But I remember being like genuinely very hype in the world. Just because I spent some days, you know, sugarcane farming. Just because I was like, you know, it'd be fun to be high up on that leaderboard, wouldn't it be? I even got like really competitive with a friend at one point. I, I don't even know why or how. Like, I, I don't know who would get competitive about that. But apparently, we got competitive about that. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing that happened. And, uh, yeah, you ever get into competitive sugarcane farming? It's way more fun than regular sugarcane farming. Because pretty much anything can be more fun if you add an extra element to it. Like, you know, so video games, in my opinion, very a social thing in a way like you know you're kind of encouraged to play them by yourself something that actually the video game industry has been hooking onto is the exact opposite of like oh yeah playing a video game by yourself isn't going to be as enjoyable as if you play them with a friend so let's force you to play with others and it really kind of um it gets into something like like the heart of how i see the world i like why i hate that so much every game is trying to be online because they know if you play with your friends you're more likely to continue playing even if you, you know, like, you, you're less able to, like, uh, boycott something that you're, like, socially linked into. This is why, even though people hate, you know, Facebook, they use Facebook. Even though I hate Twitter, I'll admit, like, it's the only way for me to reach a decent number of people um, that isn't, you know, like, uh, outside of, obviously, um, you know, YouTube. Like, it's probably the only uh, big way for me to reach a large group of people, in fact. Um, you know, like, uh, being socially linked in something makes you less able to boycott the thing. And that's why so many games which have super questionable monetization practices, they know that if they want to monetize that game to the max, to the level where people consider leaving, you won't consider leaving a game that your friends are playing. And, uh, so there's a lot of, you know, social features in there. That's the same reason a lot of apps are like, hey, we'll give you a daily login bonus to, like, you know, we want to get into your routine. And, um... It's something kind of like insidious in my opinion, but like the actual bare concept of like doing something of someone else isn't so insidious in my opinion. That's why, you know what, people can learn. You know, even though a house is meant to be like the place where your rules kind of rule, at least that's how it's been for me. Like I used to, I when I lived in a house with uh, my brother and his girlfriend, I think I mentioned this before, like as, when I first moved out, you can see videos where back in the day, I shared a room, not like a, a house, a room with my then girlfriend. Uh, lots of like, I get like genuinely upset watching back as like, oh, it's like really uncomfortable seeing the dynamic between me and girlfriend at the time. Don't go watch my old videos, pro tip. <laughs> but um, there is a, um, but the interesting thing is like that house is like three separate people all like kind of trying to find a compromise on where to live, where your boundaries uh, run in someone else's. And um, it's kind of interesting that like being able to live with someone is probably one of the most like strenuous but also, like, you know, it, theoretically, it should, it's, like, beneficial but strenuous arrangements, right? Like, do you deserve the right to live by yourself because living with others is hard? Or should you, you know, earn that by living with someone first and then saving up or whatever? Because one of the interesting things about, um, like, right now is uh, how... Because, um, you know, can we talk very briefly economics? I know this is a Minecraft video, so this is a Minecraft Let's Play. Do not talk about... Uh, you know, economics. But, um, you know, the one thing to think about the world is everything is getting cheaper by and large. That is uh, one of the byproducts of a system where people profit by making things cheaper than the competition is everything gets very cheap and uh, if, if not very... Even, like, good things get cheap. Like, the sorts of things that only millionaires could have, um, you know, 50, 100 years ago are now pretty widespread. You have to think about how cool it is that you can get pretty much any restaurant just to deliver to you, even if they don't have delivery. Yeah, stuff, stuff, dumb stuff like that. I can get any item... I did a um, COVID-19 test this week. Um, I had to stick it way too far up my nose. People say it's not painful, just uncomfortable. I would like to add my thing and say, for me, it was painful. Um, so just like, get tested, but not not because of the lies that other people tell you. You know, is it a good idea to lie people, to people for that reason? Be like, oh, it was so good. I love my test. I wish I could do another one because it will benefit the world. If, it, if people go through minor pain, they'll benefit the world. If they don't, they won't. Kind of like organ donors, people don't do that. But anyway, my, my point was meant to be, everything's getting wildly cheaper, but the few things that aren't, generally speaking, is like uh, medical stuff, education, and housing. These are the three common things people point to with like, oh yeah, let's let's like make them cheaper. You know, like how are we gonna make them cheaper? We'll just we'll just we'll just tell people to make them cheaper. That's that's the solution. I am a genius. This has never been tried. It definitely has never failed large scale in major markets that you could find if you google searched it nope it's a it's a great idea but um you know like um the interesting thing is that like um 
there are three things that are continuing to rise, despite everything else falling. And it makes you wonder if, like, what if instead of, you know, like, uh, you know, it, what if effectively if you just measured things against those three things and those three things were the static, would it be that, you know, those things are actually, you know, like, uh, you know, if, if, if you measure the price of rent as the actual price of currency, it could be that things are actually getting cheaper way faster than we ever imagined. Like, would you even care? Like, you know, right, compared to your rent, like, you know, food is cheaper now than ever before, but also compared to the price of your rent or the price of, <laughs> you know, getting a heart transplant or even dealing with COVID-19. I'm terrified. I'm going to America. I obviously, uh, my travel insurance doesn't cover COVID-19. So I, I don't mind having a heart attack or whatever, even if it costs a million dollars, because I think up to like $5 million I'm covered. Unless it's COVID, which could cost a hundred thousand, but that's on me, you know. Um, so there's a lot of like, it's an interesting thing that like medical is expensive, especially in America, but also so is education, all these things, and they're going up not just in you know like one part of the world, but everywhere. And the question is why. And coming up to the answer to that question is, I think, the really important thing that will help you actually understand. Uh, you know, like if you actually want to help the world, if you don't just want to like punish some group of people that you dislike that you're trying to argue is actually trying to help some other group because a lot of people try to argue that their hatred for one group is really love for another group even though when you actually allow them to prove it they'll be like oh no actually no um but anyway um you know like um the interesting thing about um you know the, the interesting thing to me about the the big crisis is that but also um you know like so, so, so because housing is going up more and more people live together right you get a room in, in, the, in London at least it's a common thing to just have a room in a place. Like having a place by yourself is a is a luxury you get later on in your thing. Is that, should that be normal? Is that weird to you? Or, is, you know, is that like a good thing? Because we're living more efficiently. If more people live in the same houses. We can uh, support more people in the same city, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of like these big questions that people like obfuscate. Obfuscate. Because like, if we're being real, answering those requires actually making hard and fast choices. Whereas if you just like, you know, ha having a having an ideology that is just I hate insert people here, whichever group it is. Like some some people are like, oh yeah, I hate the people that are at the top. Some people hate the people they perceive as being uh, just un you know unclean or wrong or whatever. Like it's I think I think both are kind of fundamentally flawed in like trying to think that anyone uh, any one group of people like uh, you know maybe one person is responsible for your problems. Like maybe your parents. Um, aren't very good to you, whatever else. But trying to believe... Oh, actually, I've got way too many shulker boxes. I should put these away. I want to put them away. I should come up with something fun to use all these shulker boxes for, because I was using them for the destruction of the Bastion. But now we just have so many of them. But that's a thought for another time, I guess. But yeah, Blame is a really fun game to play, right? It's one of those things that's kind of intuitively built into us. You can remember when you're on a playground as a as a five-year-old being like, oh yeah, I didn't do the thing. You pick someone to blame or like, um, if you know, when your parents tell you like, oh, you did something wrong. It's like, no, 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 it was my sibling. Like there's this endless game where like people blame each other. And you see that in like, again, it's one of those things where like, it's one of those hard to grow out of things because it's this magic bullet where if you just diffuse responsibility onto someone else, that's, it's that someone else's problem now. And uh, if someone can't take out their wrath on that other person, like, you know, if, uh, imagine if, like, someone said, you murdered someone. You'd be like, nah, it was Steve who murdered them. And it's like, can you bring us Steve? Nah, I, I, I can't. Well, it's like, well, that's, that's not being very helpful, sir. Um, you know, like, um, if you, it, like, obviously, like, actual legal systems can't use it. But on, like, a person-to-person -person basis, if you have someone who really doesn't care too much, they just want, you know, like, they just want to deal with their stuff, most of the time just being like, oh, yeah, it was, it's someone else, like, the reason X or Y is bad is it's all someone else. Uh, it's a really easy but really broken viewpoint to get into. Like any, especially if like your solution to fixing, not only a problem on a personal level, because whatever, like uh, it's, there are people who, uh, you know, especially individuals who will affect your life negatively and will drag you down on a personal level. That's, that's like undeniable. Oh yeah, we got the raid that we started. Isn't that nice? We can fight a raid or talking about, uh, we can, Actually, are my villagers gonna survive? I don't have a wall or anything. I guess that's why I shouldn't have started a raid, huh? I guess my most prized villagers are all inside. That's my, that's my one thing I have going for me right now. But yeah, let's kill some villagers. Let's kill some pillagers. And let's get some, some raid magic going on. I guess as long as we get to them in time, everything's gonna be just fine. Um, but the, I, I guess also 
this is a nice flat village, so seeing villagers should be fine. If you ever try to fight a villager, uh, a pillage, uh, a pillage raid, a pillage thing near a hill, you'll know the pain that comes with <laughs> them spawning inside the hill or like inside a cave or dumb stuff like that. Like I think when Minecraft designed villagers, they had like the plains village in mind and everything else is just kind of secondary after that. Is this iron golem trapped here? Do you think? Huh, I think he might be. I don't want to let him out though, because hey, I found you friends. How are you doing? Um, but yeah, so something, something very interesting to me is uh, the the idea of just like, oh yeah, like laying, laying a blame on something. And obviously it's, it makes sense on an individual level, like yeah, it's, but like when people like get, try to apply that to like, every problem is a result of group X or group Y, it's like, well, once you get to that scale, you're starting to indict entire, um, you know, people based on one characteristic about them. And this, th one of the first lessons I think is always important to learn about people is that one characteristic can never truly define a person. Like, um, at, you, you yourself should know you are a complex human being. You aren't, there is not one thing that defines you. Even if you are like a pretty dull human being, and let's be honest, some some of you, in, as in some human beings are dull. Probably not if you watch this Let's Play, because you're not, you got great taste in Minecraft Let's Plays. I'm, I'm kidding, you got awful taste. Why are you watching this? How is this benefiting you, friend? But um, <laughs> the, um, the, you know, the, the truth is, is that, you know, some, like, some people are you know, like, pretty, they seem pretty one directionally you find, but even internally they don't see themselves that way. You always see yourself as being this super complex character when you do something wrong. The reason you do something wrong is because, you know, you're having a bad day. It's, when you do bad things, it's circumstances. When other people do bad things, it's because they're bad people. And learning about that distinction that you make for other people and trying to work out why you apply it and how to apply it. I, I wish there was something more of us could do so we could stop trying to be like, you know, instead of trying to fix problems, let's try and work out who who's responsible. And it's like, well, you know, good good, good to make sure that people, uh, you know, don't do things again, I guess. But the most important thing uh, is like, you know, making sure that things are good now. And, you know, the, the sorts of people who actually do benefit from things not getting fixed they're the sorts of people who love these blame games. Like, oh yes, instead of actually looking at uh, issues and trying to fix them, which would you know, lead to me not being able to benefit. Oh, people are just picking on each other based on random parts of their identity or whatever. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's, it's, a, it's a real thing that happens. Um, and I guess it's something uh, that is always going to happen because that's how humans be, yo. Anyway, so the reason I'm fighting this villager raid thing, it's gonna be a real short one. I won't even get a totem because it's, I think we're on easy right now. I switched to easy just for the never mining and I haven't switched back yet. I could switch now, I won't switch now. I'm too lazy for that. Let's just enjoy my hero of the village effect. Yeah, look at, look at that craziness. And let's use this to get some nice cheap trades from villagers. Yeah, I think if you just want the cheap trades, you should, should play on easy anyway. Because look at that. My Mending One book went down from 34 to 20 emeralds. Do I have to give him a book as well? Man, you are needy. You are a needy villager. Um, so let's fill one of these with crossbows instead of whatever. Oh god, this is a messy chest. Let's just put my crossbows in here. I've got so many crossbows. I'm convinced you're not meant to get that many, but I digress, I guess. Um, let's make ourselves some books, let's get me some emeralds, and let's use those emeralds to make some things. And in the meantime, we can fix up my stuff. Like, you know what? This pickaxe right here, it's got mending on. Oh, it's it's a pickaxe, it's fine. You know, this, this axe over here, let's mend it while we do this stuff. Because, yeah, when you got expensive stuff, you want to mend things that way. So, uh, paper, 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 maybe? Yeah, there we go. That should allow me to make two stacks of books. Books are a really good thing to sell to villagers because it just requires leather, which comes from a farm anyway. And then, wait, let's uh, get my axe out. Look at this magic right here as my axe suddenly becomes fully repaired, question mark. What just happened there? <laughs> How very odd. And then let's do the same over here, except we need paper for you. You're not so fussy, so needy. So let's just trade a bunch of paper and then we'll trade the books after. And you're not over here, trade the... Trade, trade just the books over and over again until we get all those emeralds we need. You can already see how we've got like 39 emeralds. Some of those were from the raid. Some of these are from this. But um, yeah, this is how I get my, my trading done. I know it'd be more efficient to have all my villagers be in the same place. But you know what would be more efficient? If you shut up. <laughs> uh, Multi-shot, no. Aqua affinity, not really. 12, 12 goes down to two. 17 goes down to three. That is so cheap. 
I don't want to... You know, I at two emeralds, why would I not buy a couple books, you know? Why would I not? And then let's finally go over here. Let's get those mending uh, books out here, shall we? 20 emeralds. Pretty steep still, because mending is a high-end enchantment. But just like that, I have proven... Oh, the, the librarian doesn't go any more levels. How odd. But uh, just like that, you can see how um, we've uh, gotten to the stage where we can just buy mending. Obviously, anyone can do this. Most people have a village that's this level of efficient, right? Like, it's an easy... It's an easy-ish thing to do. Actually, I think easy is not the right word. I think relative... Yeah, I guess relatively doable. You know, it, it takes some time or whatever. Maybe not everyone loves that. But uh, the fact that you can do it with relative ease is kind of nice. Let's see what book this is. Knock back to. No thank you. Am I right? And uh, yeah, this is um, one of my many villages I have around the world. Having them all in one place would be a lot easier on a person basis. But also there's just something nice, maybe just to me, about like going around, trading to all the villages and different villages, keeping the emeralds stashed up together, etc, etc. Maybe that's just me. It, you know, it's definitely just me. I, I won't even say maybe. This is just just a me thing. Anyway, my point with all of this, the point uh, that I guess it's always been, is that I think especially like this year more than any uh, other time, I wonder what's happening that would cause that. People are going to try and compartmentalize you into one fact about you because they think that's the most important fact about you. And if you agree that it is the most important fact about you and the thing that should define everything, sure, why not? But at the very least, you shouldn't be defining other people by one fact about them. And uh, also, I think, uh, perhaps especially, uh, this is important. I think um, it's really important uh, not to get too caught up in a world where you think that, uh, you know, like someone else is a big bad based on just a fact about them, you know? Like, if you if you know someone has personally done something bad, you know what? Sure, you can dislike them for that. Bad people are bad. Ooh, Riptide. That is exciting. I want to buy that. I need to get a book so I can do that. Bad people who are, are people who do bad things. People who try to tell you someone's bad unrelated to that. You know what? You should question, question their motives. Is all I'm really trying to say. Honestly, question the motives of anyone who tries to get you to do anything. Kind of like how I was mentioning, people will send spam letters to you, or like, again, you get signed up for marketing emails, not because a company thinks, oh yeah, they would really enjoy getting this email from us. Like, I just, I really think, you know, this, your boy Andrew uh, would really, really appreciate learning more about the latest pizza offers happening over here. Like, I'm really, we're doing him this great favor. That's not what they're thinking. What they're thinking is we can get some more conversions. And that's, that's fine. Like, I'm not saying, oh, everyone's selfish and mean and you should go hide in your, your house because people won't bother you there. Because even inside your own house, you know, you need to pay that rent or mortgage or you need to, you know, pay that water bill or whatever. You need to do something for the outside world, even to have your little inside world. But my point is that I hope you'll enjoy this video. And uh, if people don't have good reasons to do things, just just question them. Uh, just a little bit. Or don't, you know. Don't question anyone ever. There's, there's my alternative motto. Yeah, how about we just say the opposite of what I mean today? So, you know, people are people are really bad. Without, without getting to know people, you can tell they're bad just by feeling it out. Based on what people say on the internet, you can get a good feeling for if someone is a, an awful human being. And, um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's, that's the message I want to send. People are awful human beings because people on the internet say so. There's no such thing as due process or laws or anything like that. Uh, there's there's no such thing as nuance or complexity. Everything is one-dimensional, good or bad. And if you don't agree with that, I've got some bad news for you. You fall under the bad category. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I don't know what this Let's Play even was, man. Just a big advertisement for wooden shovels over stone ones. But let's go, and uh, let, I'm going to go home now. I'm going to make a Riptide-free um, trident. Actually, you know, I need, I need to get more of these. This is such a good enchantment. I need more of these. I'm going to make some Riptide free enchantments using my new favorite book. Also, maybe another Infinity Bow. But um, yeah, I'm going to go uh, do that now. And I hope you have a great day on the way to the, to the like button. Because you should like this video. Because it helps out the channel a lot. Let's me know you do like it. Am I right? It's been a while since I said that. Okay. Okay. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Bye.